Hello, I'm Mrs Carrick and I'm going to talk to you about A-level English language tonight. I'm going to show you some slides with the kind of thing that we do to give you a little bit of a snapshot of our course at A-level. This presentation is designed to give you a sense of what the A-level English language course is all about. I'll give you a little example of some of the topics that we will study. Here are the 2010 words of the decade. Quite an insightful list, I'm sure you'll agree, of what society has, has given rise to during that time. Be interesting to see what is finally decided on by the Oxford English Dictionary this year. We've already had a suggestion that lockdown should be the word of 2020. I rather like the uh, numeronym 2020 as a word entry in itself to sum up the devastating year that we've had. What is A-level English language? A-level English language really examines language used in a huge variety of contexts. You'll be provided with deep knowledge of the systems of English language, and we'll look at the issues surrounding language and how it's used. During the course, you will have opportunities to develop your own creativity, both in the ways that you think about texts, but also in the way that you would develop expertise in using language to communicate in different ways. One of the things that we'll study is speech and the difference between speech and writing and why such differences exist. We're going to show you two examples now describing a road traffic accident. One is a spoken form, one is a written form. Have a look. In the first example, the spoken account, someone is asked what they see. Did you see what happened? Well, uh, not really. Uh, I was just walking the dog like, you know, it was not long term dark and uh, then this car comes racing down here. As I turned around, there's this bloody great crash, you know, screeching tires and everything. Compare that to this written version. At approximately 8.30 last night, I witnessed an accident involving a blue Ford Sierra on Abbey Road, Barrow. I heard the sound of a car approaching, apparently at some speed, before it braked suddenly and subsequently crashed into the wall near the junction with Dalton Road. Now you can see there are significant differences in the spoken version to the written version. You might say the spoken version is less formal, the written version is more detailed. Well, what we would do in A-level English language is we would equip you, equip you with the terminology you would need to establish exactly how language is used in a different way. We might look at non-fluency features, words such as er. Uh. These often appear in spoken language as we're pausing for thought. Equally fillers, words which don't have any real meaning, you know, they're used to fill space as the speaker tries to formulate their thoughts. You might also have noticed little words like this and here. These are called diectic references and really they're dependent on context. You don't know where here is unless you happen to be in the place at the time. Sometimes spoken language includes informal usage such as bloody, which is what's known as taboo language, a swear word. Compare this to the written statement. You may have noticed what we would call proper nouns, Ford Sierra, Abbey Road. These provide precision. You might also have noticed the complexity of some of the sentence structure. Again, you have time to think when you're writing and craft those sentences. Equally, word choice tends to be more well considered. You tend to see longer words, which we call polysyllabic lexis and they tend to be more formal as well. You might also have noticed precision in the use of adverbials, saying exactly where the crash took place. We also study the rules of the English language and where they come from. We look at standardization, a process which finalized the language into, into what we use today. An interesting example is from Star Trek, which you may have seen. To boldly go where no man has gone before is quite well known by many people. But did you know this is actually incorrect English? It's what we call a split infinitive, which is a funny little rule which was invented in the standardization process. 
which stated, when you have a root word, like to go, a verb, those two words have to go together. They're what's called the infinitive form of a verb. So therefore, to insert boldly in between those two words is grammatically wrong. But if you say to go boldly, just sounds a little bit weird. And you'll find in studying the origins of the English language that many of the rules that we uphold today are actually quite arbitrary. Looking at language change is fascinating. We look at how invasions have influenced the vocabulary system of the English language. Have a look at these synonyms. You can quickly work out which ones are likely to be Anglo-Saxon. They tend to be the poor relation to the French and Latin equivalents. Ask, goodness, folk, those very ordinary basic sounding words are Anglo-Saxon in origin. In this more detailed list of synonyms, we can see more sophistication in the French and the Latin synonyms. Now those words in their sophistication carry a certain prestige. They're seen as being better choices. And indeed in teaching, we often say to students, can you think of a more sophisticated word to use in your writing? And what we actually mean is, have you got a French or a Latin origin equivalent that you can employ? And the question is why? Why have our Anglo-Saxon origins been deemed as basic, ordinary, functional, whereas the French and the Latin equivalents have that high status? It goes back to the invasions and the systems which used those languages. French and Latin were the languages of law, of science, of medicine. And therefore, that legacy has remained that those words are more highly prized than the Anglo-Saxon equivalents. This isn't always the case. Sometimes non-standard language can pack a punch too. In 2015, there was a terror offence at Leytonstone tube station. And this went viral. A young male rebuked the attacker, saying these words. Why should five words which contain non-standard forms prove so effective as a response to terror? Even the Prime Minister at the time himself commented on their weight. So a fascinating question is how does language which is typically seen as lacking in prestige status wield power? Advertisers know too well the power of the informal and the colloquial to create a shared bond and identity with potential customers. So why study English language? This piece of research by American colleges and universities shows you the high esteem in which it's held. The communication skills required from studying English language make it very desirable for employers and higher education alike. There's a lot of analysis and essay writing, and we help you to develop those skills. You will be weighing up and making judgments about the language used and thinking about its impact. It's an excellent course for future careers in writing, journalism, linguistics, speech and language therapy, film, creative industries, and law. It's highly prized by many universities. So questions to ask yourself. Are you fascinated by language? How, can you, how it can be defined and how it can be used for different effects? Do you enjoy analyzing texts? We study a huge range of texts. It might be the back of your cereal packet and how that's used to attract you to buy it. It might be a longer text from the 1700s, looking at how people used to use language to persuade people to behave in a certain way. We look at the role that language plays in our world, how it's used in different situations, how varieties exist and why they exist. We also have opportunities for creative writing, looking at how to manipulate your own language for different audiences and purposes. Are you interested in developing your own language use? This course certainly gives you ample opportunity for that. To make the transition, it is very different to what you'll have done before, but the skills that you've developed at GCSE will be enhanced on this course. We require minimum grades of five in English language and English literature for this course. But I think you'll enjoy it. 
if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask and come and see me and we can chat through what's the best option for you. Thank you for listening.